it's just G, uh, G. Good morning. Now, I, I didn't hear a lot uh, of people saying good morning back, especially from the balcony, so I need to hear from the balcony, too, up there. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We'll work on a balcony. We'll work on it next week. We'll, we'll come back. No, that was good. I just, we just want to welcome you all here at Highfield Baptist Church this morning. It was a great song about talking about new life. And uh, yesterday, actually, I had the pleasure and uh, privilege of being at uh, Nathan uh, McEwen and Maggie Smith's wedding, who are part of a worship team. They got married yesterday uh, in Geary, yes. 
It was a wonderful ceremony. Pastor Greg had officiated the ceremony, and it was just a wonderful, wonderful ceremony and a wonderful reception. Um, and they have begun their new life together. And uh, it really is a, a fantastic thing to see two young people devoted to God coming together. And so we think of them this weekend and, uh, and uh, as they begin their, their first day as husband and wife. Just a few announcements today as you look into your bulletin. Uh, tonight, just a reminder, at 6 p.m., we're going to be continuing on with uh, We're In It Together uh, worship um, time together tonight. Uh, that is going to be our chance to uh, talk about persecution and uh, different uh, areas overseas that are definitely in need of prayer, and we're going to take some time to do that tonight at 6 p.m., so please come out to that. Next Sunday, of course, is our annual Father's Day uh, celebration in our service, so make sure you come out to that. Uh, Mark Cameron will actually be preaching next week, and we're looking forward to hearing what he's going to bring to us. And, of course, with it being uh, Father's Day, there is no evening service next Sunday, so please make a note of that now. Um, one note that's not in your bulletin, uh, just a quick note for the Evangelism Committee. You are meeting directly after the service in Pastor Greg's office, so as soon as the service is over, if you can make your way to Pastor Greg's office for that meeting, that would be great. That's for the Evangelism Committee. Our Youth Mission Tour Wall is, is doing fantastic. Again, just for those who missed it last week, it's here at the back now. Uh, we are only at like 26 numbers left. Praise God for that. Thank you for uh, p- p- uh, picking up all those, uh, those envelopes and taking them home. We thank you and certainly appreciate all that you've been uh, giving to us. The Melanie Waddell WMS group, uh, again, is meeting, uh, that's tomorrow at 2 p.m., tomorrow at 2 p.m., and uh, so they're inviting uh, anyone and everyone to come and join that tomorrow at 2 p.m. right here at the church, and uh, it's going to be a time of fellowship and um, and uh, just a time to, to gather together and worship God, so that's tomorrow at 2 p.m. The Kids to Camp Financial Assistance Forums, we of course uh, have the opportunity for you to give to our kids to, uh, going to camp in, in our church, uh, all those families who are sending kids here in our church, and if you want to give to that, of course, just a reminder to put Kids to Camp on your offering envelope. We certainly appreciate that, and we see the money has been coming in. That being said, if you are a, a, an adult here who has a kid and you're planning to send them to camp, you need to make sure you pick up a financial assistance form. You need to do that today. They're on the Youth and Children's Bulletin Board out on the uh, front entryway by the office. You can find it there. Make sure you pick them up today because the forms are due next week. So you need to make sure we have those in so we can make sure we have some money be able to help your help your kid go to camp this summer. Uh, 3K for 3K, we brought this up as well, just uh, I think it was a couple weeks ago now, and we're looking for 3,000 people to pray for 3,000 baptisms, and that's of course by the year 2025, and so if you want to sign up to pray, just visit the link there, we certainly, uh, it, it's, I mean, you can be praying and not have signed up, that's fine, but the convention just wants to get an idea of how many people are praying, so if you have a chance to sign up on that website just that you're praying and saying that you're praying, that would be great, please take the time to do that. Young at Heart is meeting on Wednesday, June 27th. They're doing lunch at the Big Stop, a tour of the museum there in Sussex, and of course, ice cream to follow it all up. Good way to end the day. Uh, Each individual is going to pay for their lunch. The details are inside your bulletin there on the right-hand side. Uh, But you can now sign up in the gym, so make sure you check out the table in the gym to sign up for that. And we uh, certainly appreciate that in advance. Also want to draw your attention, of course, to Homecoming Sunday, just a couple uh, a couple Sundays from now. We have some information there in your bulletins as well about that. Our 11 a.m. service, of course. Uh, and, of course, we're having a 9.30 leadership forum. This is for leaders in the church, for uh, church leaders. If you're involved in leading a ministry of some sort or, or teaching, this is for you. And we're going to be starting off with a continental breakfast. I think it's at 9. Um, but uh, you can sign up for that in the gym as well. So check that out in the gym and uh, after the service if you're looking as a leader to come out and join for that. All right. Uh, at this time, I'd like to uh, call upon Naomi Ford to come forward. We are getting to that time of the year where we begin to recognize um, graduates, people who have finished up uh, either high school, college, or university. And of course, this morning is actually Naomi's last Sunday morning with us, if I'm correct, for a little while, right? Okay, 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 but another week or so. So we wanted to take the time today to be able to recognize her and her accomplishments. Now, Naomi, we celebrated a little bit earlier this year about that she had a scholarship, I believe, going into the, the, new, the new school. And so she is going to Curtis Musical Institute here this fall in a four-year program. And uh, it's going to be, and this is, uh, it, she is a fantastic musician. We've seen it on her stage. We wanted to take the time this morning to recognize her graduation, uh, officially completing high school and moving into the next 
next phase of her life. And so, with that being said, we wanted to just take a moment to recognize that, to give you a little uh, congratulations from us here at Highfield Baptist Church. We're certainly wishing her the best. We know that this summer, what are you doing this summer now? Um, I'm playing with the National Youth Orchestra, which is touring around some of Canada and Europe. Amazing, isn't it? Yes, that, absolutely. Well, we as your church family are so proud of you. We're so excited to see how God is going to use you in the future. And so on behalf of all of us here at Highfield Baptist Church, congratulations on your graduation, Naomi. And of course, as with our graduates, it's important that we as a church body hold them up in prayer as well as they move forward into the next phase of their life. And we're certainly going to be thinking of you and keeping you in our prayers moving forward. Just a reminder, of course, uh, if you have a chance to fill out this on the back of your, uh, in, in your uh, bulletins, email updates. If you have a chance and you didn't fill it out last week, we want to make sure we get updated. So take the time now to fill that out and, um, and uh, make sure that we, uh, we put that in our, one of our, blue, our receptacles at one of our exits and entrances. We want to make sure we get that and that we can keep you up to date on all our things that are going on. We're going to move into our uh, call to worship at this time. I'd like to call upon Pastor Doran to come forward and uh, help lead us with that. Good morning, church. Our Bible is full of exhortations to uplift, to worship, to honor our Lord Jesus Christ. The passage I've chosen uh, uh, today comes from Revelation chapter 5 verses 11 and 13. And uh, they will be uh, read by um, this beautiful family in English and then in Arabic. Good morning, church. Good morning. Revelation 5, 11, 13, 14. As I look, I hear the voices of, of a lot of angels around the throne and the voices of the living creatures and of the elder. There were millions and millions of them. And they were saying in a loud voice, the lamp who was killed is worthy to receive power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and place. Then I heard all being in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and in the sea of her praise. Together all of them were saying, Place on our glory and strength forever and ever to the one who sit on the throne and the Lamb. Amen. Good morning. Aqra bism al-Aab wal-Ibn wal-Ruh al-Qudus. Wa nadhartu wa sami'atu sawt malaika kathirin hawl al-arsh wal-hayawanat wa al-shiyukh wa kana adadahum rabwatin rabwatin wa alufin wa alufin qailin bi sawtin azim mustahaq huwa al-kharuf al-mizbuh an yakhud al-qudra wal-ghina wal-hikma wal-quwa wal-karama wal-majd wal-baraka wa kullu khaliqatin mimma fi al-sama wa ala al-ardi wa tahat al-ardi wa ma ala al-bahar kullu ma fiha سمعتها قائلة للجالس على العرش والخروف والبركة والكرامة والمجد والسلطان إلى أبد الأبدين آمين The lamb who was slain is worthy to receive all the praise all the glory all the honor and we're here today, Lord Jesus, to do exactly this thing. Lord, we look forward with hope in anticipation of that moment when people, millions and myriads of people from all the nations, all the tongues, all the tribes will worship you, Lord. But today we are here, Lord, in this place, in this church, in this city, Lord. And in your name, Lord Jesus, 
I declare this church sacred space and holy ground. And in your name, Lord Jesus, I declare with confidence, let the celebration begin. For we are here to worship you, Lord Jesus. We are here to honor you. I pray for all this congregation and everything that will happen here, Lord, that you will be honored and worshiped in our midst. And Lord, I just want to say, we love you. We love you because you loved us first. We love you for what you have done for us. We love you, Lord Jesus. Take our praise because you are the only one worthy in your mighty name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. We want to worship the Lord and come into his presence and not just go through the motions today, but let God meet us here. Amen. Thank you, Tassine and Amen. Found out what a good cook that this lady is last Sunday. So graciously hosted Greg and I in their home and the food was amazing. I wish I could cook like that. Don't think it's going to happen. Sorry, Greg. <laughs> Thank you for reading scripture, and it's one day we will hear, we will worship together in every tribe and every tongue, and we get tastes of that on earth, and it's so beautiful. And this song, I just as we enter into worship, I wonder if you would just stay seated, and then I'll, I'll invite you to stand. But I just wonder if you would prayerfully sing this song as a prayer, um, just letting all the distractions of maybe this week or this morning melt away. Um, we come before the Lord, and sometimes I love the little first line because this is when the music fades, and sometimes that that's not music sometimes it's just busyness and noise life is so busy and and fast-paced if you're anything like my home maybe you're at a different stage of life but sometimes it just literally feels like a roller coaster that you're just you know tag team and in and out of the door and 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 yet when we come into his presence and it's all stripped away that's the place that we find our strength at his throne and at his feet and i pray that you find yourself there often because i know that i need it and it's, this says when the music fades and it's all stripped away and i simply come and god reminds me of all the things that i've made it about me and god says it's not it's not about you it's about what i'm trying to do and so i pray that that's our prayer as a church that we make it not about us but about what he wants to do let's sing together when the music fades
are our solid rock. You're our portion, our strength, and our strong tower, God. We just lift your name high this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. We just stand with us and welcome one another. We're going to go into the chorus of On Christ the Solid Rock I Stand. He is our solid rock. Amen? Stand together and lift your voices.
songs growing up and even to this day it's actually it's one of those songs that really does make me shed a tear every single time in Christ alone fantastic song at this time I'd like to ask our ushers to come forward to prepare to take up this morning's tithes and offerings and of course our children can come forward we're going to get your children here listen very carefully to sit here on the ground to look at the screen we're going to look up at the screen so you're going to sit here on the ground and look up at the screen or, or the stairs and look at the screen that works too yeah that, that's fair that's good we're going to get you a look at the screen. We want to play a little video for you. Uh, we've almost got them all, I think. Waiting on a few more. Yep, take a seat there, guys. Come take a seat. And we can, uh, we'll play that video now.
Thank you. So, guys, this summer, of course, every summer, one of our big uh, uh, events in the summer for you guys is Vacation Bible School. And so we are excited that VBS is, of course, coming back this summer, July 9th to the 13th. I don't know if you know this, but it's about four or five weeks away. It's very close. It's really exciting. And we are doing shipwrecked VBS where we learn about how God rescues us. But we're also going to learn a little bit more about some really, really famous stories in the Bible. And really hope you guys are going to plan to come out to that. But here's the thing. Here's what we want you to do. We want you to also invite your friends to come along, right? We want to see people maybe have never come to church before, come into our church here and be able to hear about how Jesus rescues them as well, okay? So it's really important. That's my challenge to you guys is to try to invite someone. Think of someone you don't, someone you know who has never really been to church before, who has never heard about Jesus, and, send, and give them an invite. Let them know. Let them know when it is, July 9th to the 13th. We're gonna, we have posters up around uh, in, the, in the gymnasium and on our youth bulletin board as well. You can see some info there. And our VBS registration forms are also available there uh, on, the, on the children's bulletin board now. So if you want to pre-register one of these guys here, or if you have another child who's not here today, you want to pre-register them, please check out our children's bulletin board. We certainly appreciate pre-registrations in advance. It makes the planning a little bit easier for our first day. And it makes it a little bit smoother as well. So if you can fill out those pre-registration forms and get them back to me as soon as possible, that would be great. And of course, it is, I should mention, it is free. VBS is free. It's for everyone. So, great. It's K to 5. We hope you're going to look forward to that. You're going to hear some songs about from VBS, both in junior church before VBS, and we're going to be doing one in our church service a little later on this summer, in which we're going to involve some actions from the adults. So you have something to look forward to, adults. There you go. I'm including you in the fun. All right. Well, at this time, we're we're going to prepare to pray. Um, and I just want to give a quick reminder to all of our nursery uh, leaders. Uh, just a heads up for our nursery leaders. If you have a chance to visit the nursery after the service to just sign up for a few days in the next few months so we can get our summer schedule filled out, please take time to do that after the service down in the nursery. Thank you. Well, let's pray together, shall we? Dear God, we thank you that you do, in fact, rescue us. That you come to our aid. That you give us courage to face each and every day. Lord, we are grateful that we can come here and worship you. And we pray now that we can continue to learn about you downstairs. And that through these gifts that we offer to you, that more people will also come to know the name of Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior, and the one who rescues them from sin. Thank you for being with us this morning. We pray for all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And would you give little Lana a, a, a hand? It's great to see her here today. Lana Briggs. I don't know if you know the journey she's been on, but she's been on quite a little journey, and her parents as well. It's been really tough. Good to see her today, and God, God's looking after her. And uh, glad to have my girl home, my firstborn. She's home for a little while, and um, she's accepted a position in Atlanta, Georgia, at the Emory Hospital. And, uh, yeah, so as an RN... <laughs> She'll be um, working as a registered nurse in oncology and heading towards her nurse practitioner eventually. Um, so I, I have no worries for the future. She's going to take good care of me. But uh, <laughs> this is a beautiful song that she's chosen that blesses her heart. And um, I pray that it blesses your heart as well.
the words mean so much to me. Every single morning, his mercy restores me. Just try to sing along. We're going to do the bridge twice together. as we sing before we open the word we believe in God the Father based on the Apostles Creed beautiful put to music here we believe in the Holy Spirit he's given us new life we believe in the crucifixion we believe in the resurrection and we believe that he's coming back again do you believe that today? do you believe he's coming back again? do you believe it could be today? amen
pray that as your foundation today. You may be seated. Let us pray. Our loving and heavenly Father, we are so privileged to be here today. Lord, we lift you up. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are generous. You are gracious. You are holy. God, we thank you for those attributes. Lord, we thank you that you see all things and you are in charge of our lives and of the world. And Lord, as we come here this morning to worship you as a church, what a privilege it is that we can meet openly. What a privilege it is to live in a Canada, in this country, Canada, that we are free to do so. We pray for the church that are oppressed and persecuted. And Lord, just be with them today. Give them that peace and the strength that they need to carry on. And Lord, that may many people come to you in these countries. But Lord, as we shift back here in our own church, Lord, I pray that each one here, as they reflect on your word, not only read the word, but let us be doers of the word. Let us humble ourselves. Let us put others first. Let us not be selfish, but let us be selfless. And Lord, I just thank you. I thank you for the times that members have come around myself and have encouraged me. And Lord, may that each one of us be our goal today is to be encouragers for one another. Lord, I pray for Pastor Greg as he comes. And the words that he speaks are not of him, but of you. And Lord, that they will penetrate our very soul, our hearts and minds. Lord, as we've just sang, we believe. We believe in you, God the Father. We believe in you, Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit. And he has given us new life. And Lord, I just thank you for these words. And I thank you for the wonderful musicians that have pinned these to paper. From the beginning of time, you have given us the gift of music to praise you. And Lord, right now I pray for our, our leaders, uh, world leaders as they meet. And Lord, I pray for a very important meeting that's coming up next, uh, this week I believe is coming up. And Lord, uh, I just pray that you'll be with these world leaders. And hearts will be changed. And that you will be in the midst of these meetings. Uh, Lord, sometimes that's hard for us to, for the world to see. But you are in control. And Lord, I just am so privileged that I can call you Father. And as Father's Day comes upon us, let us be mindful of our fathers and other people in our lives that have been influences on us. But ultimately, you are the good, good Father. Mm. And Lord, as we continue to enter into worship with you this morning, you said to us, those who come to follow you, that we are to deny ourselves and carry our cross. Lord, for those who seek to save themselves will be lost. But Lord, we thank you for that promise that those who lose their life, those who lose their life will be saved. So Lord, continue on worshiping to us um, and blessing us as we worship you. Lord, sometimes words get mixed up, but you know our thoughts. So Lord, continue to bless us. Thank you again for the worship team. And Lord, I right now as I'm praying, I think of our children. I think of the summer that's coming up. And there's so many trials and tribulations that face and temptations that face our children during these vacation times away from church, some of them. So Lord, be with our bus ministry kids. Uh, Lord, just pray, pray that uh, their influence here uh, will spill out into their communities. So, Lord, be with us. Thank you for that promise that you've given us new life. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Well, good morning. It's good to be in church today. I'm going to ask that you to stand with me again as we turn in your Bibles to Psalm 139. If you'd like to stand with me as I read this passage of Scripture, uh, just in respect of the Lord's Word, as we read this uh, little bit longer section of Scripture this morning, it's a great passage of Scripture. If you've never read it, you probably should take some time to read it at home or just reflect on it if you haven't in a while. Psalm 139, and this is how it begins to read. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thoughts afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down, and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. You have hedged me behind and before you laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It's high, and I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit, or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take my wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you, but the night shines as the day, and the darkness as the light are both alike to you. For you formed my inward parts, you covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. And in your book they were all written, the days fashioned for me, and yet, as yet there were none of them. How precious you are... How precious also are your thoughts to me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they would be more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Oh, that you would slay the wicked, O God. Depart from me, therefore, you bloodthirsty men. For they speak against you wickedly. The enemies take your name in vain. Do I not hate them, O Lord, who hate you? And do I not loathe those who rise up against you? I hate them with a perfect hatred, and I count them as my enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. And see if there's any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Thank you. You may be seated. This passage of Scripture tells us a lot about the character of God, who He is. In fact, if we were to talk about it in theological terms, we would say that this passage tells us about the omniscience, omnipotence, omnipresence, and immutability of God. What that really means is that God is all-knowing, He is all-powerful, He is everywhere present, and He is unchangeable. Great things for us to know, but sometimes not very practical. How do we put that into our practical living? What difference do those things make to our lives? Today I want to concentrate for you on some areas that I believe will be specific so that you can have the understanding of who God is for your particular situation in life. Joe and Sean were talking the other day. Joe had, had to work on his vehicle, worked on the back brakes on the vehicle. Turned out that one of the, one of the uh, bolts actually got seized in the car, broke the head of it off. Then he had to go get it welded or, or, or burnt through, uh, all kinds of stuff in order for it to be able to get that bolt out so you get a new bolt. It took a lot longer than it should have taken to look after brakes. And he was telling Sean all about it. And Sean was like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, Curtis got up and he said, Hey, I understand exactly what you're talking about. And, 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 uh, and I, I, he says, I, I understand completely what you're talking about, Joe, because I was there. In fact, a few weeks ago, I had to do the same job on my car. The exact same thing happened. It took me two days. It was so frustrating. What was the difference between Joe and Sean's conversation and between what Curtis understood? Because Curtis had been there, right? He knew what we were talking about. And many of you have had situations and challenges in your life where somewhere along the line you've met somebody else who's been there. And you've told your brother or sister in Christ they prayed for you and you've met together, but they haven't necessarily been in the same situation. And all of a sudden you meet somebody who's been there. What a difference it makes. Why well, don't I tell you something this morning? Our God understands. 
there was a group of engineers who had to make a new building. And the building had to be accessible to all people. And so they talked about how they were going to make it accessible to everybody. How are they going to make this wheelchair accessible? How are they going to make sure that it was all the, all the different uh, controls, light switches, doorknobs, everything else were going to be at the right level? How are they going to do that? So they met with others who had done a similar construction in the past. And they found out that there was always something that was missing. So they talked with those who were in wheelchairs and they found out the best they could, what they could understand. And then somebody had a bright idea and they said, why don't we do this? Why don't for one day we all get in a wheelchair and spend the whole day in a wheelchair? And the engineers began to have a new understanding of what it was to be confined to a wheelchair. And it was the best construction they'd ever done. Personal care workers working in a home with seniors and their leadership wanted them to help them to understand better what it was like to be a senior who was being cared for by somebody who was in their 20s or 30s or 40s. And so they all had to wear a pair of glasses with Vaseline smeared on it and put cotton batten in their ears. And they worked for a day like that. And all of a sudden they began to understand the effects of aging and who they were serving. A photographer one time wanted to get some understanding of what a swamp really was about. So he sent a drone over top, took some pictures, but didn't really get to understand what a swamp was like in Florida until he took his socks and his shoes and his pair of shorts. He walked into the water, and when he walked in the water, the mosquitoes were buzzing and the frogs were chirping, and this guy was looking at him in the face. Our God understands us because he got into the swamp. He understands us because he puts Vaseline on his glasses and cotton batten in his ears. Our God walks or, or, or rides in a wheelchair for the day. The omniscient God, the ever-present God, confines himself to a planet, a country, a province, a city, to a body, a human body. Philippians chapter 2, though he, didn't, though he was God, he did not think it was equal, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges and he took the humble position as a slave and he was born as a human being and he appeared in human form and he humbled himself in obedience to God and he died a criminal's death. Our God understands what it is to be like us. In fact, in John chapter 19 and verse 28, it says Jesus knew that his mission was now finished. And to fulfill the scriptures, he says, I am thirsty. Can you think about that for a moment? Our God understands us because he became human and thirsted. God probably never experienced thirst before he became a man. In John chapter 11 and verse 35, it says that Jesus wept. Our God understands you. He knows what it's like to have emotional challenge, to have loss, to have grief. To have his feet hurt after a long day of walking down dusty roads. He understands us. In Mark chapter 4 and verse 38, it says Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. And the disciples woke him up. Can you think about that for a moment? The God of all creation who created everything that there is, sustains it in the palm of his hand, had to sleep. Because he was tired. He understands fatigue. Matthew chapter 21 and verse 18 it says in the morning as Jesus was returning to Jerusalem he was hungry. You ever get hungry? It's 10 to 12. You probably are all hungry. And God understands what it's like to have a little growl in the belly and to feel that. Jesus got into the swamp. 
Let me ask you this question. What care do you have today that is too insignificant to talk with Jesus about? Who somehow you might think that you could talk to him and because he's so big and so mighty and so far away, he couldn't possibly understand when he's already walked the road we walked. What area in your life could you possibly think that God couldn't understand? You say, well, maybe temptation. Well, it tells us that he was tempted in all ways like we are, yet without sin. Christ's own body desired food after 40 days. And there it was, Satan himself stood before him and says, make these stones bread. And Jesus says, you cannot live by bread alone. But his body was screaming out, I'm hungry. He understood. He knows who we are. Let me just tell you a few things that I think Jesus understands in bigger sentences or bigger ideas. And, and then maybe you can pick a few of your own as you leave. Jesus understands our problems. Jesus understands loneliness. You ever felt lonely? It's amazing how sometimes you can be in a place where there's a hundred people, five hundred people, a thousand people, tens of thousands of people, and feel alone. Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane with the closest people that he knew on earth. And he says, pray with me for one hour. And he found himself all alone as they slept. You have sorrow in your life in some way. John chapter 11 tells us about that great story between Jesus and his good friend Lazarus. And God's own heart in the person of Jesus Christ weeps. And he understands sorrow. Is it relationships? Jesus understands relationships, let me tell you. He spends three plus years with Judas. Three plus years with Judas in the inner core of who he is. And what happens with Judas? Don't worry about the phone, folks. I had somebody call me one time while I was preaching. That was wild. And my phone was on. Don't worry, that happens. <laughs> we live in 2018. It's, Jesus had this amazing, intimate relationship with this person called Judas. And Judas takes out a knife and goes, Pow, right in the back. Ever been in a relationship like that? Ever feel that? He understood a relationship with a, name, a lady named Martha. And Mary, one who wanted to sit at his feet, learn all the time, and just hang out with him, and one who just wanted to serve him. Now, I don't know, I could probably have a couple people like that in my life. I wouldn't mind it too much. Huh? If I had somebody to serve me and somebody just listened to everything I had to say all the time, it was great. But Jesus had that influence in people's lives. Jesus had a relationship with Peter. And at the very crux of most important moments in God's life, in the person of Jesus Christ, Peter says, I don't even know the man. Jesus understands our problems. Maybe your problems are some of the needs of the world. And Jesus says in Matthew chapter 10, Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And yet not one of them falls to the ground outside without your father's care. And even the very hairs of your head are numbered. So don't be afraid. You're worth far more than sparrows. And yet at the same time, it's said of the person of Jesus Christ that the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Sometimes you might not have all that you think you need for your daily needs. Jesus understands that. He knows what it is to be hungry, to have no permanent dwelling. Whatever it is, whatever problem you might face, Jesus understands. Secondly, Jesus understands our plight. We are lost people. He understands that there is a plight here. In Acts chapter 8, we're going to turn there for a moment. Acts chapter 8, and I'm going to begin to read at verse 26. Acts 
And it says, Now the angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise and go to the south along the road which goes down to, from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert. So he rose and went, and behold, a man of, Ethiop a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch, a great authority under Candace, the queen of Ethiopians, who had charged all of her treasury and had come to Jerusalem to worship, was returning. And sitting in his chariot, he was reading from Isaiah the prophet. Then the Spirit said to Philip, Go near and overtake this chariot. So Philip ran to him, and he heard him reading the prophet Isaiah, and said, Do you understand what you're reading? And he said, How can I, unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him to the place in the Scriptures where he had read this. And he was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before his shears is silent, so he opened not his mouth. He was humili humiliated, and his justice was taken away. And who will declare his generation, for his life is taken from the earth? So the eunuch answered Philip and said, I ask you, of whom does the prophet say this, of himself or someone else? And Philip opened his mouth and began at the scriptures and preached Jesus to him. And now they went down the road and came to a place of water. And the eunuch said, See here, what hinders me from being baptized? Then Philip says, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Jesus understands our plight so much so. Listen to this for a moment. There's a man who's been castrated who comes from Ethiopia, a place who's far off the map of Jerusalem, a place on the other side of the world. He doesn't look like anybody else there because he's a black man. He sits in a world where there is a woman, which is interesting that the scriptures actually note this, that there's a woman who's in authority as the queen. And by the way, historically accurate, Ethiopia always had women as being the leaders. And sometimes there were kings, but when they were kings, the woman and the king both had equal authority. Just an interesting note. And here comes this black man all the way up to Jerusalem who is a ruler in the queen's palace. So this isn't a guy who doesn't have authority. This is a man who has great authority, wonderful possessions, riches beyond where he could tap into, and he comes to Jerusalem during the Passover to worship because he's been reading Isaiah's scroll, and he understands that the suffering servant, there's something very unique about this. And he worships Jehovah God. And on the way back, God says, I understand the plight of mankind, but more importantly, I understand the plight of individuals. And this one individual has an ache in his heart to know me, and there's no other way for him to know me than for, for Philip to go there and to tell him. And he sends Philip. Great story. There's all kinds of things we could get out of this. The fact that this man was not afraid, even though he had the stature of such a stature, he sees this guy running by his chariot and he says, What are you reading? And he, and, and he even answers him. He didn't have to. He says, I'm reading Isaiah. And he says, Do you understand what you're reading? He says, How can I? Unless somebody's going to teach me. And Philip says, I can. Well, you, you're a peasant. But this man is not so full of himself, even though he comes from a different country and he's kind of immigrated all the way over to here to be in this place. And he invites him up into the chariot. And God does something to the heart of that man. And I suspect that the reason he did something for that man is because he went back to Ethiopia and probably told a whole lot of other people about Jesus. But God understands our plight. He understands the plight of mankind. Listen to what it says in 2 Peter chapter 3. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. Listen, the Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men are slack, but is long-suffering to us who are not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God understands that the plight of man is hopelessness. If you're here today, this morning, maybe you don't come to church that often, maybe you have, but you think that, you know what, life is life, this is what it is, this is what we do, and at the end of it, we go into the ground and that's it. That is hopeless. And God understands that's a hopeless idea. Furthermore, God understands the hopelessness that if we don't have redemption, we spend eternity separated from Him in a place called hell. What the Bible describes as weeping and gnashing of teeth full of fire. And instead, he says, you can have hope in the person of Jesus Christ. 
God brings hope through, person, through, through Jesus. Finally, I will say this. Jesus understands people. Have you ever had a problem or situation to try to talk to somebody, but they just didn't seem to understand? Jesus understands. He understands people as individuals. He understands groups of people. He understood the Pharisees. You know how he dealt with the Pharisees? Called them whitewashed tombs, brood of vipers. You say, that's awful. Yeah, but you know who was a Pharisee? Nicodemus. Do you know what is the most quoted passage of Scripture in Scripture? John chapter 3, verse 16. The Scripture passage that Jesus quoted to Nicodemus. Why? Because he wanted to see Nicodemus saved. God understood people, and he understood that when he went to the Pharisees, if he was to coddle them in some way, they would continue their Pharisaical ways. But instead, he says, you're a brood of vipers, you're a bunch of people who are whitewashed tombs, you're pretty on the outside, but inside you're dead man's bones. And why does he say that? Because he wants them to have a hunger. And so Nicodemus comes to him by night and asks him the question, and Jesus says to him, all people can be saved. For I gave you this wonderful gift, my son Christ. Jesus understands the publican. The publican is this story about not one particular person, but a type of person. A person who's humble, who doesn't have anything, who comes into the church and he raises his hands up to God, not in some kind of demonstration that everybody else can see, but in the corner somewhere, he smokes his chest and he says, be merciful to me, God, a sinner. And God says, you're justified today because you come with that kind of heart. God understands people. He understands the prostitute who came and took an alabaster jar and broke it open and poured it over the foot of her Jesus. How many of you would do that? God understands. It doesn't matter where you are. You can be the highest of the highest, a, a ruler in a foreign country that represents the queen herself. You can be the lowest of the lowest, the person who everybody on the street kind of wants to walk by a little bit because they don't really want to associate. Because if they do, they might think that maybe somebody else would think they're there for some other purpose. Jesus understands here and there and everywhere in between. He understands people. He understood Zacchaeus because he was a short little fellow and a guy who had little man syndrome wanted to be somebody so he became a tax collector charged everybody a little extra everybody looked at him he had the biggest house nicest car you know all that type of thing I know they didn't have cars back then I know that okay <laughs> nicest car right and then all of a sudden Jesus walks by and he looks up in a tree because Zacchaeus is so short he can't see over everybody he climbs a tree to see Jesus and Jesus says I'm coming to your house today Zacchaeus he understands people he understood the woman at the well who had the issue or sorry the woman who had the issue of blood who touched the hem of his garment to be... He understand the woman at the well and the fact that she was looking for love in all the wrong places and had five relationships and was living with a different man. And Jesus says, what you really need is a savior for your soul, not another man in your life. He understood Peter, excitable Peter. He understood John, sensitive, loving John. Jesus knew people personally and he walked among them and he still does. He understands my heart and He understands yours. He doesn't allow us to just sit where we are and not grow. He pushes us. But He also understands exactly what you need. Jesus resides in our life and can calm us when we hurt, can cheer us when we're sad, and He can convict us when we're bad. <laughs> Jesus came to be a people's God. He wants people to know Him, trust Him, and believe in Him. And He understands us, our problems, our plight. And He understands us as people. Do you want a relationship with a God like that? I do. I don't want a relationship with some God who's somewhere out there, who, who somehow in, in His scheme of things has a big balancing scale, and He kind of weighs out our good, and He weighs out our bad, and He decides whether or not you're, you gain entrance into His heaven. I don't want a God like that. I don't want a God who somehow is maybe at one point he's this and another 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 point he's this and I'm not really sure which one to worship today. I'll just pick my pick because I don't really know. I don't want a God like that. 
I want a God who defines himself in Psalm 139 as omniscient, all-knowing, everywhere present, immutable, unchangeable. I want a God who knows who he is and demonstrates himself to us. And he's done it through the gracious, most gracious way he ever could, by giving us his own son. And more than that, I want a God who I can cry with. Who he can understand me. I want a God who when I'm just having a rough day, I can say, Lord, I'm just having a rough day. And the good thing is, I know you've had some rough ones in the past. Because you walked Golgotha's hill for me. I want a God who rejoices with me when I rejoice. I believe you want the same thing. Billy Graham, most of you know who he is. He used to sing this song or have George Beverly Shea sing it at the end of every one of his services. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. And now thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. Just as I am and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark blot to thee whose blood can cleanse each spot, O Lamb of God, I come. Just as I am, I would be lost, but mercy and grace my freedom bought. And now to glory in your cross, O Lamb of God, I come. Recently, a new artist has written this chorus along with it. I come broken to be mended. I come wounded to be healed. I come desperate to be rescued. I come empty to be filled. I come guilty to be pardoned. By the blood of Christ the Lamb. And I'm welcomed with open arms. Praise God. Just as I am. My prayer is that you would know the same kind of God. That you would feel His loving arms come around you in whatever situation you're in. And if you're having an emotional moment right now, it's okay. So am I. And if a tear trickles down your cheek because you just recognize, hey... I'm a privileged person for the God I serve. That's a good thing. Let's stand together as we close today singing that song. And may the Spirit of God move and minister to our hearts in ways that just connects us with Him. And maybe you're here this morning and you haven't come to Jesus before. The invitation is always open. Today is the day of salvation, the Scriptures say. If you're here and you've never said, you know what, I believe. Like we sang earlier today, I believe in God the Father. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in the Holy Spirit and that He's given us new life. Maybe this morning you want to declare that. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe He died on a cross, that He was buried and He rose again and He paid the penalty of my sin. But I've never asked Him to come into my heart and be my Savior and my Lord. If that's your story today, maybe right now you need to say, I come. I'm just going to come and let you do your work, God. Forgive me. Be my Lord and my Savior. Know me, even as I am known. And walk with me through this life and bring me hope of heaven and eternal home. Let's sing it together, shall we? Just as I am without one
I need some more information. That's all you need to say. You say something like that, we'll know. Maybe you're here this morning and this song is speaking to your heart and you've never been baptized. God tells us that if we're going to walk in obedience to Him, that we need to be baptized. We baptize by immersion right here behind this curtain. There's a baptismal tank and maybe you've never been baptized, but you feel God speaking to you that way. You can come to me personally if you like and just say, you know what, Pastor, I think I should be baptized. And we'll start that conversation and maybe have some moment in the future to do that. Or again, maybe there's just a moment here and we sing this song. You just need to say, Lord, you know what? There's somebody in my heart I need to pray for today. Because I just feel this burden and I know that you understand. So you just, you just pray while we sing this song. Just recently you have touched us with we need to live daily in your grace filled with the mercy that you bestow upon us father we thank you that you don't hold our wrongs to our account but you allow us to be forgiven we thank you father that you don't allow us to suffer in this world without the hope of a heaven we understand that one day we will be in your very presence and all the challenges and trials of this life will be away and we will be in a place of utopia Until then, let us celebrate those things that you have given to us. Let us celebrate the joys that are among us and let us weep with one another and hold one another in account that we might look forward to the day where Christ will return. And until that time, we pray that the church will have a voice, a voice in the world, that young people will speak at school, college and career students will not be afraid to stand up and have Bible studies with one another, encouraging people to come to Jesus, knowing that he's the hope of the world. That those of us who are in the workforce might recognize that there are those who we work with every day who struggle in this world to make kind of some kind of sense of what it is. To strive and strive and strive to bring meaning and identity to their life. When we have an answer for them, I thank you, Lord, that you've met us just where we are. And I pray for those who have struggled in this church over the last number of weeks, months, or years. And I thank you that you never leave us nor forsake us. Now let us be your witness. 
to your presence in our life. In Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Folks, let me just remind you of a couple things before you go this morning. First of all, this evening at 6 o'clock, we have a service. We're in it together. The persecuted churches around the world. We come together to talk a little bit about a particular area, to talk about what Scripture talks about into that, and have a little prayer time together. We'd love to have you come out and join us. Next Sunday is Father's Day. Bring your dads here, okay? They can't go fishing until after lunch, all right? got to come here first. And we have a little gift for them. We're looking forward to Mark preaching for us. I know he's got a great message the Lord's laid on his heart. We're praying for your brother this week as you continue to prepare. The week after is our roll call service, okay? If you know what that means, we're calling it homecoming. I can't tell you how many people I meet in the city of Moncton who say, well, I went to Highfield Baptist when I was a kid. Call them up. It's the Sunday to bring them home. All right? Kevin Vincent will be here, and he's going to speak to us that morning at 11 o'clock. We're looking forward to a great message. We have a leadership breakfast that morning, starting at 9 o'clock. It's a leadership breakfast. If you're involved in some ministry of this church, you're invited to come to that, but you have to sign up. We've got some people prepared for that, and they can't feed people. They don't know they're going to be here. So please go to the gymnasium, sign up this morning, or you can call the church and leave your name there. You can send us an email, but do it soon so we'll have the numbers, okay? We're looking forward to the next couple weeks. God's continuing to do His work in our midst, and we're just going to see what it's going to happen. God bless you. May his mercy and grace follow you all day today.